All right, let's so, hear uh, major parlay's picks. What I'm gonna start with is basically picks that you you wouldn't expect or you would it would be popular to go against. So I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna do more or less uh, a couple counterintuitive. You guys already know I got the Giants on the money line, and that's I'm, I'm a Washington football team fan. I'm just watching this line run away, and after going off the first week and spending a couple dollars, just betting the numbers really. Um, so. The Dallas Cowboys at the Los Angeles Chargers. They got the Chargers favored at minus 180. And I, I feel like that's – people are definitely overreacting to how good the Cowboys played against the Buccaneers. And I feel like people should be all over this Cowboys line at plus 155, plus three and a half. You would expect the Cowboys to win this game flat out because the Chargers didn't show you anything that makes you – you know what I'm saying? I can't even think about anything the Chargers did. Well, warrant them even being minus 180 against exactly. the Cowboys exactly. coming off a game where they did look good. But this nervous. is uh, – I'll say this is this is an odd line to me. I'm just going to point these lines out and say that this line is odd. And not saying that you should necessarily bet against it, but I'm, I'm trying my luck betting against some of these odd lines this week. So do I believe that I should take the Chargers minus 180 in a perfect world? No. But I'm going to take the Chargers minus 180 on that money line. Um I believe uh, this uh, – I think everybody's got the Bills dialed up money line. Bills dialed up minus three and a half. I'm not as confident in Miami taking the whole game, but I do see at least an upset on the spread. <clears throat> and then uh, the last one I have here is the Chicago Bears. I think the Bengals played a great game against the Vikings, and I think everybody's going to be dialing up the Bengals on this one. I think the public's going to be all over the underdog Bengals. And I think the Bears are gonna somehow, some way come through. So I don't know how many that was. That might have been four. That's you can throw the you can throw the Falcons plus twelve and a half on there. That's a lot. Because I mean, I think the Falcons will come through money line, but you can throw them twelve and a half on there. All right. So we got major parlays picks. Are we ready for parlay Pete six pack? We are. I've got it right here. Um, all right. I'm gonna kick off with uh, my favorite line of the week. And that's the Green Bay Packers minus 11. Um, I do expect them to fully come out and whip their ass. And then let's not forget the 49ers were up 38 to 10 in the third quarter on the Lions. And they cut, they let them backdoor cover at that. If you got, if you got, if you got the final, yeah, if you had you got, the final, you got, Kelsey, you got take, Kelsey on the hands team fumbling a ball. Yeah. And um, the Lions ended up, uh, Backdoor covering, but I don't see that happening in Green Bay on Monday night. Aaron Rodgers thrives in big games um, on, in these type of settings. And so, uh, especially against the Detroit Lions, come on now. Um, so let me let me take that Packers minus 11. Uh, next game, I love this Titans-Seahawks over 54. The Titans are going to score some more points. They're going to score some more points. And I expect Russ to come out there slaying that rock against that terrible defense. Um I love that over 54. I think that it, it's a great bet, especially at the minus 110. It's not like it's one of those minus 125 bets. It's pretty good value there. Uh, third game, um, I love the Falcons. And even though the line has went down, I'm going to still run with it. I would buy the point and a half. I, I originally was going to get it at 14 and a half, but now that's impossible unless I do an alternative spread. Um, so just going straight off what Vegas has right now, I'll still take the Falcons to cover that plus 12 and a half. I think that they're going to look a lot better than what we saw. Um, and even if you just kind of go off of what happened last year, they were beating the shit out of the Bucks uh, in the game here. They were up 17 points, and in true Falcons fashion, they blew the lead. And so uh, they were handedly beating them, and then the very next week gave Kansas City all they could handle. Um, Young Way Koo missing a uh, – you know, potential t- to send the thing into overtime and uh, AJ Terrell, AJ dropping, Terrell the dropping the interception that would have sealed the game in general. Yeah. So, and then the following week after that, played Tampa again, were tied up at halftime and then got blown out in the second half. But, you know, those are the two Super Bowl uh, representatives last year, and the Falcons played them pretty well with what's pretty much the same cast of guys back. I expect them to cover that number. Um, I'm with JP on this too. I love the Cowboys' money line. I just don't see – a world where Justin Herbert um, comes out and they outscore the Cowboys. I just don't see it happening that way. From an on-paper standpoint, um, you know, you look at Tampa's D, some people thought Tampa had one of the best defenses in the NFL. They were lighting them up. And Dak is, in fact, back. 
I can say that with JP's uh, uh, fantasy trade, that there was some value, even though Patrick Mahomes had the highest quarterback total too in Week One. You know, but whatever there, I guess uh, <laughs> he wasn't. He wasn't playing the number one defense, but you got it. He's playing a, some guy. Hey, look, he wasn't he playing Miles number one off defense. The That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying he wasn't playing number two, three, four, five. He wasn't playing the number one defense. So. Dak, Dak looked good. Hammer the. I love. That's probably my favorite money line of the week, which is why it's on here. But let me just say, I went the I went the opposite of you on that one. I'm not going to interrupt your six pack, but I, I just because I think everybody's going to hammer that. Why that that that. That's that's the that's the free candy on the van right there, bro. I'm telling you. <laughs> sometimes telling sometimes you. I just got to be proven wrong. You know, I I'll be hard headed about it. You um, specifically said I you said, you you specifically said I can't see a world in which Justin Herbert comes out blah 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 right. But could you see a world in which Aaron Rodgers comes out week one and has a a, a better passer rating, spiking the ball every play? No, look, and, I'm just and saying. You, I'm just putting but, in perspective for you. But I'm but, but, but look at it this way: that was probably Aaron Rodgers' worst game of his career, too. Which is even more the reason why they're going to steam the lines this week. Like, you know, because he heard the talk and he had to address it. I think he blamed one of those interceptions on him getting hit in the nuts or something like that. But <laughs> he did. That's that's I what know, he said. Um, but anyways, still love the Cowboys in that spot. Uh, Zeke didn't even get loose against the Bucks. I mean. So he's going to have to break through eventually unless Zeke's done. But I like Tony Pollard anyways. That guy. Well, they, yeah, they got to commit Pollard. to the run and actually call running plays so Zeke can get his his motor going. Yeah, what did he get, like six carries? If I was under 10, this was ridiculous. It felt like Tony Pollard definitely had more yards than him and was getting just better usage, more positive yards every time he touched the ball. Um, next. I do like the – oh, I'm going to let you finish. Because I was going oh. over in that Dallas Cowboys Chargers game. It's crazy. What it's is 55, it? 55, but it's got to go over. Who's playing defense? Not the Cowboys. James. Um, but, no, next in my uh, six-pack, give me the uh, – and I love this pick, too. Give me the under 50 in the 49ers-Eagles game. I just – I don't see the points getting scored there. Um, San Francisco coming from the West Coast to go to Philly. Um, Jalen Hurts is going to come back down to earth, so he's not going to be torching – uh, Nick Bosa, you know, he's not going to be ev- evading these guys. Um, the Eagles are going to probably try and establish the run because I don't believe they're going to have too much success throwing the ball on them. Um, and vice versa. We know that Kyle Shanahan loves to open up his offense through running the ball. I mean, that's what sets him up. And even though he doesn't have Mostert now, um, Trey yeah. Sermon, baby. Well, Elijah Mitchell, you know, that which is so crazy. I don't think Trey's their guy. I, that clear. I think that Elijah Mitchell, Mitchell definitely is their guy. They were both. I didn't realize he was a rookie, and he was drafted in the sixth round. And they healthy scratched uh, Trey Sermon. That's a bad sign to me. But either way, love the under there. Um, see something like at best, you know, twenty four, twenty one ish, maybe. Uh, and then uh, for the final beer in this six pack, give me the Buffalo Bills. I'm drinking it. I, 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 I'm a roll with Bills Mafia going to Miami, covering that minus three and a half. Um, I think it's great value. I, I don't think that Josh Allen um, is the Josh Allen we saw against Pittsburgh. Um, and I think that, you know, he's going to go down there. He's going to ball out. And the, their running game, for what it's worth, their running game looked a little bit better, too. Indeed it did. So, then last just year. to recap. For major parlays picks, we got Giants money line, Chargers money line, Miami plus three and a half, the Bears money line, Falcons plus 12 and a half, and the over in the Cowboys and Chargers game. Sounds like a nice six to me. Major parlays picks. Parlay Pete six pack. Green Bay minus 11. Titans Seahawks over 54. Falcons plus 12 and a half. Yep. Cowboys money line under and the 49ers versus the Eagles game and under the Bills minus three and a half. Under 50. Yeah, under 50. Under 50, 49ers, Eagles, and Bills minus three and a half to cover against the Dolphins. You got and it. I, I want to go on record saying that most of my picks are counterintuitive, but last week, most of my picks were, were very similar with uh, Parlay Pete, and our six pack did go 0 for 6, right? So, with intentions of winning, all right. I'm I'm being a little counter. I'm seeing where I messed up last weekend. 
Last week, I think that 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 Titans versus Cardinals line was that was a sucker line when you think about it. They're getting Julio Jones, all this stuff. Line never moved. They kept it right there. It moved at the very end with some with a lot of Cardinals money at the very end. But mostly that line stayed the same. Same with the Green Bay line. I thought that once they determined Aaron Rodgers was gonna say that line should have went. Like when I got that plus three Saints locked in earlier, like I had that locked in when Aaron Rodgers wasn't gonna play. And I was like, yeah, I got that locked in in time. Whole situation changed, line didn't change. Some of the stuff I'm just I don't know if Vegas knows something we don't or what it is, but a lot of my bets are counterintuitive. I'll just say that. So here's how I look at it. I don't think they can start judging us until week four, week five, once the season gets once the season settles down, because Vegas doesn't have this thing figured out yet. So when you got 10 underdogs winning, <laughs> that doesn't make Vegas happy. So we, we it, it, it takes time. Well, when when most of the money's on the favorite, maybe it does. Because if you start to look at the handles of these games, uh, the Titans' handle was over ninety percent. Green Bay's handle was over ninety percent. Like you got handles where it's all the, all the public's going one way. So how does Vegas win? Because the public sucks. San Francisco, San Francisco spreads my favorite one. Public was all over that minus eight and a half, and you're telling me in two minutes. Two minute backdoor cover, two touchdowns, an onside kick, and a two point conversion in a two minute drill. That is right. Outside of Madden, and even in Madden, man, even man, you gotta be playing rookie Madden for that to happen. Yeah, straight up. Yeah, yeah. Kittle's fumbling the ball. That's the one that. That's the person that fumbles the ball too. I mean, it's just it, you can't make it up. No, literally, literally. I mean, or can't. 